the Benetti Oasis 40 meter has by any measurement been a roaring success. If you want a new one of these, well join the queue because the order book stretches to 2026. Enter Phoenix. She was launched in 2021. She's hull number three and she's currently on the market with TWW yachts. And even within an extraordinary range, Phoenix stands out with her silver metallic paint upgrade and the fact that she's only ever been used privately. And in this in-depth tour and review, I'm going to try and unearth quite why it's proved such a successful formula for Benetti Yachts. Before we get into it though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll never miss another tour like this one. I'm Jack Haynes, you're watching Yacht Buyer, and this is Phoenix. Let's start back here because this for me is the winning piece of design aboard the Oasis 40 meter, aboard Phoenix. This amazing aft deck area that's set so low, it's really close to water level. You have amazing connection to the sea. This boat's got the optional transformer so that sets a staircase down into the water. As you can see, it also goes up to quayside level, not the sea bob on it at the moment. But then you've got this amazing living area that of course includes this enormous spa bath here. Looks amazing at night with the backlighting. You can see the name of the yacht is here on the glass. It's a phenomenal feature, it really is. And then as you move up into the cockpit, it spreads out. You've got the fold down balcony, so you're gaining even more living space here. You can see where the balconies finish when they're up, but when they're down, it really usefully expands the amount of usable living space down here. And then you have the fixed furniture here set in the middle, and crucially, it's all designed to face aft to make the most of the view over the stern of the boat, both the hot tub and of course the water. And you'll notice another key point about the design of this yacht, no staircases back here. So there's no stairs getting in the way, ruining the look of the aft end of the boat. They're very discreet. We'll see that as we move through the yacht, but it also means you've got even more space to enjoy up in this area. There's equal access coming up towards the saloon here. And then you have this amazing circular glass design, the circular doors that are joined so you can push one and they both open which is important because they're pretty heavy, but then you have this amazing vista and that connection between the inside and the outside of the main deck. That is the real winner on board Phoenix. Exterior design is by RWD, a British house, and inside it's Bonetti and Kazerski, and it's a really nice mix of formal and beautifully appointed, but still quite relaxed as well. And the way the sofa sort of curves around with the, with the space here and follows the curvature of the doors works brilliantly. And the, the key bit of design down here is the way that it seamlessly melds between the internal spaces and the outdoor spaces. And this phenomenal view aft as the cockpit just sort of tips away and all you see is water. It really is spectacular. The effect is amazing. Floor to ceiling windows on both sides as well. So natural light is lovely. And this great mix of the more formal dining area amidships and then that nice relaxed seating aft that connects so well with the cockpit. We'll head forward to port first because here we have access to the crew space and we also have access to the galley here on the main deck and it's a really nicely appointed galley as well. Love the marble finish on the top, nice central island here as well, huge amount of cold storage here on the starboard side, you see extraction is excellent as well, nice large induction cooktop here and then a big oven down below. It feels like an almost professional standard galley in here. It is absolutely lovely. And of course that connects really nicely to the deck above for the crew, but also down to the crew quarters, which is down here through this staircase. Then we've moved here back onto the main passageway. As we come down here, you'd see there is access down and up to both decks, and there's also a day head. But what I really want to show you on this main deck is here forward, the owner's stateroom, because it is an absolute stunner. Not only is it enormous, but the level of finishing in here is gorgeous. And there's a really nice use of space. Yes, you have an enormous bed, but you've got a nice sofa area here as well. If you want to do a bit of work or just chill out in a bit of privacy. And one of the key points about Phoenix is that where a lot of other Oasis 40 meters have had a gym, she's got an extended walk-in wardrobe. And when I say extended, I mean, look at the size of this space. It is absolutely enormous and it's probably got one of the best views of any wardrobe I've ever been in. It is spectacular. Moving out, talking of spectacular, let's check out the bathroom. Because again, compared to other Oasis even, she is extraordinary. Look at the size of this bathroom. Right forward here, full beam, 
and an amazing amount of space. Stunning finish with the marble tops and flooring throughout. And you have the bath in the middle here, flanked by a separate toilet cubicle and a shower space. Twin sinks. It is a fabulous space, it really is. From the owner's stateroom then, let's head downstairs and take a look at the guest accommodation. With the owner's stateroom on the main deck, that leaves space on the lower deck for four guest cabins. And you can partition this area off, but it's quite nice to leave it open because you come down to this nice open atrium area. We'll head to midships first because you have identical VIP staterooms. And these are lovely cabins, very spacious, plenty of headroom. You can see I'm six foot tall. You can see there's loads of space above my head. You have personalized AV. Throughout these cabins, through control of an iPad, you control everything in here remotely from your own cabin. Obviously a nice big bit of a hull window as well, so natural light is decent. And of course, a very nicely appointed private bathroom. The same in both of these VIPs. If we head forward, you find the two twin cabins. Again, they are identical. More, so single beds, but lots of space between them. Again, headroom is superb and you have the same level of finishing, of course. So it does feel absolutely lovely in here and a really generous private bathroom for both of these as well. From the guest accommodation on the lower deck then, let's head upstairs to the bridge deck. Up here on the bridge deck then, obviously you have this great connection between the bridge deck aft and this sky lounge as well. So those doors open up really wide and you have a nice amount of seating space over there and just a really lovely area to chill out, enjoying the sun. And then you have this great connection between the two areas. So you have internal dining up here. You have a really nice big L-shaped sofa, which is next to this enormous flat screen TV. Great place to come and watch a movie or some sport of an evening. And then if we keep moving forward on this deck, here to port you have a pantry area, obviously you have the galley lower down, but up here means the crew can serve these areas and not have to always be going to the main galley. You've got a dumb waiter here as well, so food and drinks can be served really easily between these areas. Starboard, you have a day head here and access out onto the starboard deck too. The captain's cabin is here on the port side, and obviously that's very well connected to the bridge. And what a bridge it is. It's a really interesting design, this. You will notice the lack of a steering wheel. There's a very small wheel on the port hand pod here, but this is proper spaceship stuff. And I love the fact that you can move between the two helm stations. And of course, a yacht this size, the skipper isn't using a steering wheel. At slow speed, they're gonna be using thrusters and throttles, and at high speed, they're probably gonna be using autopilot. So it's a sensible bit of design, and the layout of the screens is fantastic. Two big screens on these pods. We've got the shade on the screens at the moment, hence why it's a bit dark in here, but you've almost got floor to ceiling windscreens the effect is wonderful. And you've got this seating area up here as well, so guests, crew can come and enjoy the view from up here, sit behind the skipper when they're on watch and really enjoy the ride with a fantastic view over that bow. Talking the bow, let's head outside. We have side doors both sides. We're in the Docklands, so you might hear a few planes going overhead. And then we're here to this four deck space, which is a really lovely area. Very big, as you can imagine, but a nice mix here of seating space, sunbathing space. You've got a couple of coffee tables down here as well. So you can have drinks, cocktails, nibbles out here. And of course, on a hotter, sunnier day than this, you've got shade as well. These carbon fiber poles slot in, you have a nice canopy so you can get some shade when you're out here as well. Of course, this is also a working area. So the crew have a little step down to where you have all the four deck equipment for the twin anchors and the mooring gear, slightly separated from this living space, but this is a really nice private terrace. From forward on the main deck then, let's head up to the sun deck. I mentioned this in the cockpit, but one of the smart things about the design of this yacht is how discreetly the staircases are integrated. You can't actually really see the staircase up to the sun deck from the main deck, but there it is. And it brings you up here onto this really lovely outdoor living space. There is the option to have a hot tub here as well, if you want to supplement the one in the cockpit. If you don't have that, you just have a really nice amount of sunbathing space forward. Got this bar area here that's really well located by that sunbathing space and obviously excellent coverage from the hard top. Television mounted over on that side and then this is your cooking wet bar. You can see we've got the grill here. Loads and loads of storage underneath. It's the same on the other side and in the middle, this enormous 
teak topped dining table, which looks fabulous. And obviously is under full shelter with a hard top, but it's also got the spotlights. So if you're dining up here at night, you've got plenty of artificial lighting. And then right after, as you can see, bathing in the sunlight, you have yet more lounging space. It's not necessarily sun pad space, but you've got nice low slung seating, sofas, coffee tables, just another really nice place to relax. Now we can't look at the crew space on this yacht because it's occupied. There is space for nine crew on board. Where we can go though, is down to the engine room. Engine room access on the Oasis is down a hatch on the port side and you come down and it's sort of split into two spaces. You have an ante room where you have a lot of the ancillary equipment, including the water maker. And then here in the main engine room, I'm flanked by MAN 1400 horsepower V12 diesels. She has a top speed of 16 knots and will cruise at 11 knots for 4,000 nautical miles. So if transatlantic crossings are in your remit, this boat is perfectly capable of that. She's a 45,000 litre fuel capacity for just that reason. In terms of the space, well, these are big engines, but you wouldn't know it in here. There's a huge amount of room around them. They've got, they're sleeping at the moment. They've got the dust sheets on, but you can see the size of the blocks and how easy it is to get around them. And it's a great working space as well. The engineer's on board, so he's got all his tools out and you can see there's plenty of space to work in this area and look after all of the machinery. You'll have noticed that we've got to this point and not mentioned tenders, and there's good reason for that. In a similar fashion to the subtle staircases, the tender garage is discreetly integrated with the Williams tender and jet ski launched and recovered via a hatch in the starboard side of the yacht. Nothing will get in the way of clear deck spaces in connection to the water aboard Phoenix. Thanks very much for watching that tour. If you liked it, please do give the video a like. And as I said, she's on the market right now with TWW Yachts. I'll put a link to more information in the description of this video. If you want to watch more yachts of this size, we've done a tour of the Custom Line 140. You can watch that if you click up there. We've got loads of sea trials if you click down here. And if you'd like to subscribe, please click up here. Thanks again for watching.